And good evening, friends. We are going to be joined momentarily by our good friend, Trey Zoller, founder of Jefferson's Bourbon. I'm Tom Fisher of Bourbon Blog, and this is the Quarantine Drinking Team Series. We've been doing this nearly for two weeks, and we are going to keep going throughout the quarantine. We hope all of you are healthy, well, staying safe. Uh, for those people that are in the hospitality industry, the spirits industry, you know, we're thinking of you just like uh, many of our friends because this has been... Big impact having COVID happen. So, uh, but we're going to talk bourbon and bring people together tonight and have some fun. Answer your questions. I'm going to join Trey Zoller in live now. From Kentucky, Trey Zoller, founder of Jefferson's Bourbon, is about to join us live. And I'm actually having some. Um, I'm having some Jefferson's Manhattan here. Cheers, Tom. How are you, buddy? Cheers. How are you, Trey? Good to see you. I'm great. I'm great. I'm. Uh, let's see. It looks like I'm cut off. There we go. Um, I'm great. I just got off with a virtual happy hour with a bunch of buddies of mine from college. So excellent. Uh, and uh, is that something that you had done before until all this started happening? No, not until all this happened. We would uh, get together live every once in a while, but this is a great way. They're scattered all over the country, so it's fun to to get together and have a cocktail and just see what's going on. Well, we're going to make this feel like a, a happy hour with all our bourbon blog friends and a lot of Jefferson's fans. I see someone who just joined today. They have uh, some Jefferson's cask, Voyage 14 in the glass. Uh, everybody oh, join in. Yeah. Do you have them all lined up there in front of you, Trey? Look at that. I've got, I've got uh, an arsenal right here. Oh, very, very nice. Well, uh, we saw you go live a few weeks ago on the Jefferson's Instagram. We really enjoyed that. And we've been really having a lot of fun bringing great friends like you on our show, Trey. Yeah. And um, tell us, you know, first of all, I think most people who are joining us uh, know about Jefferson's as a brand. I do feel like they do and they know who you are. But just maybe give us the quick summary of, um, you know, if they haven't had a Jefferson's or they don't know yeah. what's happening lately at Jefferson's, what's going on? Sure, sure. Well, my dad and I started this back in 1997 when uh, bourbon was in a 30-year decline. So uh, certainly wasn't the uh, the enthusiasm for bourbon like it is today. And I grew up in Kentucky. My family was involved in the industry. Bourbon was just kind of part of life. And then it wasn't until I moved away from Kentucky to a half dozen different places around uh, the country that I found that everybody wasn't drinking bourbon. <laughs> and as I went back to Kentucky, I found out that there was an ocean of great old barrels that were either evaporating off into nothing or being blended into younger stuff. So I started kind of accumulating small esoteric lots of bourbons and then started blending them together and doing different things with them. So uh, it's been an evolution. We've now got 19 different expressions of Jefferson's. And, wow. uh, so we're having a lot of fun with it. Looks like you it. are, and you've, and you were mentioning the old barrels. Now that would have been what year was that? The the first Jeffersons would have been in what? Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. So, years ago. just out of curiosity, I don't, I wasn't even planning on asking this. The the oldest that you might have right now would be what, as far as uh, what you. Well, the oldest that we've bottled, uh, we did a thirty year old presidential select a few years back. Yes, we that was some so barrels. Good. Yeah, it was delicious. Um, some of those barrels, it was between 30 and 33 years. So that was the oldest I've ever uh, put my hands on. And it, it, that whole, we, we launched three different products at once, Jefferson's 21, 25, and 30-year-old. And for some reason, the 25-year-old just didn't have, it wasn't woody like you would expect at right. all. Was the 21-year-old, which was actually aged 21 to 24 years old, had a lot more wood influence than the 25 to 30 for whatever reason. And uh, those were some unbelievable barrels. Those, Am I those about? were incredible. Uh, coincidentally, I actually was hosting a tasting in upstate New York right before all this started. We got to go in the gentleman uh, cellar and we found a bottle of the, um, the 25 rye. We, we yeah. had some of that. And, and it was, that was just about a month ago. And it was so incredible. Right. Um, but that was, they were all really, really good. And, and just, those were so elegant. Uh, hard, hard to find. Now, do you, do you still have any yourself? I still have a few around. Not many of those. <laughs> not many at all. I've got more of our 17 and 18 than I do of uh, those older vintages. Excellent. Hey, as, as everybody's joining, a lot of great people joining us, Kentucky Bourbon Boys, Steve, and all these guys joining us. If you have any questions for Trey, please feel free to ask them down there. We'll, we'll try to get to them 
as, as quickly as possible. But let's go ahead. I'm, I'm tasting some Manhattan. I thought this would be a good way to, uh, to kick off the evening with the barrel finish cocktail. You know, we, I was telling you earlier, my wife's been learning some, some great new cocktails as we've <laughs> all been quarantined. But, you know, if you, if you want to grab a cocktail, it's, it's, it's already made. It's been barrel finished. I just, I love this. Tell, tell us about this. Yeah, this is, it's a, it's a great cocktail for dummies like me, who's not <laughs> somebody that makes a lot of cocktails. But uh, it's as easy as you can actually pour it in a, a shaker and strain it or just pour it right over ice like oh, I'm doing so right now. And it's ready to go. No, cheers, Trey. It's, 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 so, it's so delicious. Cheers. What's, about how long is it barrel finished then? It's... It's barreled between four and six months. So we did this with Esquire magazine. It was actually done. I did a uh, a whiskey pairing for Chef Edward Lee when he was launching one of his books. Um, right. And I sat next to the editor in chief of Esquire magazine. And one of the pairings that I did was a five liter barrel aged Manhattan. And he loved it. He enjoyed it so much. He and I took that five liter barrel out on a little pub crawl afterwards. And we were, pouring drinks for people. And uh, he called me up the next day and said, Trey, why don't we make a, a cocktail together? So being from Esquire and Manhattan totally made sense. It took us two years to come up with a recipe. Everything that I sent to him was extremely bourbon forward, which is how I, I like right. any cocktail. Right. Like let's let the, the other components do their work. Right. And uh, it actually, it's a perfect Manhattan with also a little, uh, barrel aged spiced cherry bitters in it as well. Mm. So we bring it down to 82 proof, add the sweet and dry vermouth and then the, the bitters as well, and then put it back in the barrel between four and six, uh, four and six months. Wow. And this actually, and this has the, uh, the oldest bourbon that would be in this would be. The bourbon in here is four and five years, four and five years old. And mm -hmm. it's the sweet and dry vermouth making it the, the perfect Manhattan. The be it's a beautiful style, just very rich. Uh, mm -hmm. It's robust. Uh, everyone that I taste it on just always loves it. And it's, uh, like you said, it's, it's a good, we, we, we want to salute all the bartenders and mixologists, especially, you know, most of those, a lot of those right. um, uh, going through some rough times right now. Obviously, uh, so, many co so many states doing cocktails to go, which hopefully is helping support some restaurants. Right. Um, have you had any cocktails to go in the last few weeks since all this has been happening? I, and honestly, I have not, but uh, I, I know that People are doing that, and it's, it's People are a great doing it. program. Yeah, yeah, it's a great no, program. yeah it is. But no, no matter what it uh, is, whether it's quarantine or not, this is always a good cocktail to Right, go. right. At, and, and, uh, at 68 proof, this is a uh, – it's a big cocktail. It's really big. It's really big. And that's and that's one that's uh, that's in your permanent collection. We can find that one. Um, yeah, should be on the shelves all the time. All the time. We're actually doing another bottling of it. Yeah depending on what goes on here in the next 30 days. Excellent. Have you ever played around with any other uh, barrel-aged uh, cocktails? No, well, I cocktail? have. We've done a number of barrel-aged cocktail yep. com uh, competitions. Right. Um, did one in San Antonio, which I did not know much about the city of San Antonio. We went to 10 different bars, gave them uh, the barrels, I think, 120 days prior to, and, uh, and had just a blast doing it fell in love with the city after doing that because it was so yeah. diverse, such a great place. But they, all different types of uh, cocktails came out of it that I really enjoyed. And I, I'm not, my idea of a cocktail is a piece of ice in it, typically. <laughs> so I, I'm the first person in the world to admit I know very little about cocktails. I love a great cocktail when it comes together. Um, but at home, I'm not much of a mixologist at all. I typically just pour it right over. Yeah, no, that's that's a good plan. Well, so much of what you've done, I mean, before it even is put into a cocktail, it's already thought through. I mean, you've you've really taken a very creative approach to um, to bourbon, and uh, and you know, we're very we're very happy and and, and honored to feature uh, many of your whiskeys on our Why Whiskey Educational series. And I just think that there's so much to educate about and to learn about when it comes to uh, the different directions you've taken whiskey. One of those, uh, not too long ago, you re released the Twin Oak, mm -hmm. uh, which is just another favorite and just uh, 
and just it, very elegant. And, and tell us about the Twin Oak. It, that was one of my most favorite products to put together. It's actually what I was just drinking when I was doing this virtual happy hour. Yeah. Um, it really, that took eight, a good eight years to put together and hundreds of different experiments with independent stave company, which I'd been to the independent stave cooperage here in Kentucky many times, but it wasn't until I was invited back to the cooperage in Missouri at their headquarters that I became a barrel chef for a couple of days. And so I worked with all different types of barrels that they, you know, they've got cooperages around the world. So barrels that, that uh, was, you know, they had different wines and different spirits of the world going or going into them. And I looked at it and I said, God, we're, we're really rudimentary in what we do with barrels here right. with bourbon, you know, four levels of char, and, and that's about it. So over the next, I guess that was in 2012, after, and that was, it was during their 100th year in business celebration that I went back and did that. And so I started playing together with all different types of variables, either taking new barrels or old barrels or new bourbon barrels with wine heads or new bur wine barrels with bourbon heads with staves that had been seared or slow cooked, all different types of variables to come up with a proprietary barrel. So what we did with this is we took 10-year-old bourbon and we put it into a barrel that had been, the wood had been extra seasoned. We had grooved it out so it had twice as much surface area. We put a flash jar on it and then smoke and toasted it to bring out some mocha flavors and then put that in there. And it was only uh, finished in there for four months and then just came out with such great flavors. What's that extra seasoning uh, do to it? Talk about the extra seasoning. The, you know, you can really feel it in the wood. Um, yeah. it, it's, it gives a lot of flavor out of it. It's not so, you know, a lot of times you can get some green wood um, when when something's been in a barrel a relatively short amount of time. Right. That extra seasoning really takes that green wood right out of it. So, so the, so did a lot of experiments. This was your, this was your favorite as far as. And this is, a, this was one that I really enjoyed. I thought this was so flavorful. Yeah. But not, has, but not real woody, which right. I, I love. You know, you get it some mocha some flavors out of there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has really some, it has some nice buttery notes. I mean, it it begins to taste even like an older bourbon than it than it even is. Mm -hmm. It really does. Is that it's, was that part of your role as well? You know, yes, no. I'm not so hung up on making something taste old necessarily. Right. I just want to pack in flavor. What I, my main goal one is just to make it taste great, but I want to pack flavors throughout the tasting experience. So you get an upfront, mid palate, and finish. So it's just not one dominant flavor. It's more about balance and complexity. And I think you this go really gets it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. To evolve. Is that, is that part of what you think when it comes to any whiskey that you make, that you approach, you want flavor to go places with everything? Absolutely. Do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You bet. That, that's, yeah. you know, so I'm not a, a mixologist at home, but it's basically the same thing. It's about right. balance and complexity, and it's going somewhere. It, it's evolving as you're drinking it. So, right. yeah. I think and so. people will ask me that. What's, you know, what's your favorite bourbon? What do you like best about a whiskey? I always say, you know, I want something that every time I come back to it, I taste something new and something that goes places. It has flavor arcs, to, like you're riding yeah. a, a roller coaster of sorts. And sure. that's, what, that's what your whiskeys do. And, and quite yeah. often I'll say, you know, I think one of the most interesting whiskeys in the world uh, that we were really pleased to be first to talk about many years ago on uh, Bourbon Blog um, was, and still is, is, is your Ocean Series. And yeah. um, I have a bottle of, well, I have a couple here. I have a <laughs> bottle of the 10, the Voyage 10 cast strength. And I know you're going to be doing a new one that's going to be a weeded, right? Well, we've got a weeded coming out right now, weeded Voyage out. 22. Right. And Voyage 23, which will be a cast strength. Both of those. Voyage 23. Mm -hmm. So I dug up a weeded that was the uh, the Voyage 15 because I had a little of that one. All uh, right. But uh, the ocean, the ocean experiment, I mean, I think that you've this. This is something that it's so much fun to ask people when I'm hosting tastings. And I'm sure for you as well, of course, when you go back to ocean. What flavors do you get on this ocean, that ocean? Maybe a few people even sit down below. 
what oceans are you drinking? If you are drinking an ocean or Jefferson's, tell us down below what you're drinking. But someone even told me once with one of the oceans, they got uh, a fat, like a fattiness from a sausage that they could only find in Japan. I mean, it was very, it was very interesting. It really reminded them of something. Uh, um, I love that. Yeah, something that was international. But this is something, it sees the whole world. There's flavors that every time I come back to it, it's new. For those who don't know, I think most people watching know what Ocean is, but give us the Ocean overview and tell us about the, yeah. um, tell us about the new Ocean's coming. You know, it's kind of, I've had two aha moments really in the last 20 years. One was being that barrel chef and seeing what other spirits and wines were doing with their barrels. Right. The other one was when we put barrels on the ocean for the first time and when they came back and seeing right. what happens when you change the environment and the agitation. So on that first uh, voyage, we put five uh, new fill barrels on my buddy Chris Fisher's ship. It was called the Ocean at the time. It's now called O-Search. And he catches tags and releases great white sharks in order to collect their data to really help you know, maintain abundance and sustainability within our oceans. Um, which, by the way, we do have a shark that he tagged named Jeffersons that, uh, that you can follow. He's just popped up. Um, off the coast of Wilmington, North Carolina, in the last couple of days. So it's kind of fun to see where he's going and what he's up to. You can, you can follow it on Twitter, right? You can follow him on Twitter, absolutely. That's so exotic. And evidently, I, there was just six of them that pinged right in the same area. And I know we had some fun with it. They were social distancing, but it looked like they were right on top of each other during <laughs> this. Um, but that being said, we put the barrels on there. It took, it took off for three and a half years. And we came back, and we had, didn't taste it within that three and a half years. He went to an un, 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 excuse me, uninhabited island chain and catching sharks. When he came back, it was black in color. It was absolutely thick, and wow. it was just delicious. And it really changed everything. Um, you, know, you get so much brininess that came out of it. You get the caramelization that the sugars caramelize when we cross the equator, as we do now four times really gives it some, some beautiful big flavors and makes it so viscous. It's very weighty. Um, and then it's in constant contact with the wood, so you're picking up all those wood flavors as well. Right. It's, it's rocking around. The flavor is, I mean, so many of these do have that sea air, but what are, the, I mean, what are some of the notes that, that, that you get on, say, well, any of the oceans? I mean, are there flavors that you will stumble upon yeah. when you go back to a, the 15 or the 14 or? Well, you know what? It was actually Voyage four, either 13 or 14 right. that, uh, that got rocked by three hurricanes um, uh -huh. in the North Atlantic. So we get daily sea conditions. We can tell if it's calm, moderate, rough, or very rough, and also the sea, the air, condi uh, the air uh, average temperatures. So we can tell what's going on, uh, why it's out there. And you know, it was very rough for a couple months out there just beat the hell out of these barrels which caused just a huge amount of evaporation so it really condensed it and made that specific voyage extremely briny but um yeah i, I you know i had some flavors on that it, it was like raw leather that were really wow. just interesting and different and that's great you know i've, I've done a number of tastings we'll, we'll do six or seven different ocean voyages and taste them next to each other. And it's great to see how different they are. When the voyages come back, it's really like Christmas morning. Right. Because even though they're going on the same route, depending on what time of year they take off or what they encounter, it's going to totally affect the juice different ways. So, Have you found that certain areas <laughs> that, say, some of these boats go to certain areas of the world or, or that have – I know they all are a little different, but have you found that certain regions – We'll do different things to it. I mean, is, have you? Well, we've gotten some samples. So they're basically, they're all going on the same route right now. Same they're route. The same 30 ports. Right. We do have an Antarctica um, journey coming up here, a voyage okay. coming up soon. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens and just the frigid, but immensely rough waters to see how that, you know, really rocks the, the alcohol in there and, and what's going to happen with that wood that is not as 
you know, it's more rigid than it would be if it's in a hotter climate. So, of course, we're going to cross the equator going down and back there. So we'll have some. And that's coming up. That'll that'll set sail when? Uh, well, it's TBD right now. Problem. Yeah, yeah. It'll, right. be, it'll be coming up. We'll say. It's coming up. So right yeah. now, I don't, I don't have. Right now, our schedules are off on everything. So. Right, of course, of course. Uh, I'm tasting the 15 right now. That was the first weeded. Mm -hmm. First weeded. It um, certainly was. And someone, just while we're about to taste this, Trey, someone just asked, are the barrels at sea placed in different spots on the boat? Are they, are they seeing? Are they we're contracted to be on top of the bow of the ship. So yeah. we're in containers with cradles in there. Um, they have like big sunroofs, so to speak, cut into them. So it's extremely well ventilated, right. uh, which is allowing direct sunlight. And, you know, it's getting rained on. It's getting waves over the bow. Um, it, it's getting the elements really uh, are right there and in its face. So you can tell when a barrel comes back from its ocean voyage, you know, it, it looks like it's a 30-year-old barrel. It's been around for a while. It's it has some cover, but it is right in touch with all the elements. Correct. That's Correct. A, yeah, it's getting rocked. So we want it up on top, so it gets as much as pit, much pitch as possible as well. Right. right. So that's where, that's where the, it lives. The amount of loss. I mean, we talk about uh, angel share and how much it loses in Kentucky. What's the amount of loss on a? Um, it depends on the voyage. Like depends. we were talking that voyage fourteen. Yeah. With the three hurricanes, yeah, yeah we had less than a thirty-five percent yield, so somewhere between thirty and thirty-five. So when it comes back, we all put twenty dollars on top of the barrel head and take a guess, draw a line, and start drilling down to see how much. <laughs> it yeah, so it's good and bad. Have yeah, you you're getting have quite you a become bit good at good. projecting this? Or do you do you usually win that bet, or do you? I do pretty good on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that being said, you know, you've got outliers like that one that was way lower than I would have guessed. And uh, you know, th those are bad yields for us. So, you know, we've only got so many barrels on there for each voyage. And once it's, you know, once it comes back, it's whatever we have. Well, the so. goal with the weeded, I mean, obviously the wheat, weeded always adds a, a, a more of a softness characteristic to a bourbon. But when you set out and said, let's do a weeded voyage, what were you hoping to get and what, what did you get? Well, I thought we, what we'd get, and it's exactly what happened, is those flavors that are more indicative from the ocean would be amplified. So you're going to get more of that brininess that comes through. That's so you're going to have that big caramel come through yeah. from those sugars in there. Yeah. And, yeah, so it is a little bit softer. It's kind of a, a little bit drier, typically. Yeah. Um, I get the dryness, the kind of a salted caramel, as, as we've said before. Yeah, uh, there is that creaminess, but it goes into that brinier element a little quicker. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that hits and just kind of you get it on the sides of your tongue pretty quickly. Yeah, and that tw and, then, and so twenty will be a well, the upcoming weeded will be actually twenty two. Twenty two will be the upcoming weeded, and Correct. the cast strength will it be uh, weeded I as think, well? No, no, it will not be weeded. It'll, as be, well. it'll that, be that's a ride. Mm -hmm. okay. That'll and be. It'll come rise. back. I, I think we. It just came back. I think it was 112 or 114 proof. Any things you're getting off of these uh, these new ones that people might be excited to hear about as far as... Well, the, uh, I, I have not had the opportunity had to try... I have the weeded, but I have not had the opportunity to, to try the cast strength as of yet. They just got it and processed it. So, they just got it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not allowed on the distillery right now. We've got two, on, two people <laughs> in there. <laughs> for two chefs, and uh, we want to make sure that they're right. Yeah, um, we don't we don't want anybody to uh, sure get sure. sick there and have to get a shut right. down. So, well, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, obviously, you know, we're we're bringing people together around the, the, the quarantine so that everybody can have a good whiskey, and we're glad people have been telling us down below what they've been <laughs> drinking. What's it been like there uh, for you guys uh, during COVID? Any uh, any observations? What have you guys been up to? Well, you know, gosh, luckily. Um, Liquor stores are staying open. Yeah, yes. obviously, yeah. It, it's a shame what's going on with our bars and restaurants. Um, you know, we're, we're yeah. hopefully trying to do what we can there. There's a lot of at-home consumption, um, right? If I'm any indication, <laughs> <laughs> my empty, my Corona kills are you know, are stacking up pretty good. 
We're, Luckily, I've got a good vault here at the house. Um, I think we're all together there. Uh, any, any, uh, anything that you found as since you've and, and you know we're we're sipping home. We're you know we're creating new cocktails. Anything that you found at home that you've um, maybe a bottle that you didn't know that you had, or a kind of a, a story about just um, discovery. I had an old barrel that we bottled up years ago. It was one of our seventeen-year-olds um, that we had bottled up, and uh, I. I had a couple bottles, you know, kind of parked away. And when they shut down, when everything shut down, I was like, there's no time like the present to go ahead and open this guy up. And, uh, <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and it was gone. <laughs> it was opened and killed in the same day. You think this is, maybe it's done something for all of us to say, you know what, there's these bottles that we hang on to. We think if there's going to be a special occasion to have this, Maybe we should open it up. And I feel like for me as well, um, now that when things got so serious, maybe we should open this up. Maybe this is the occasion. Maybe this is the occasion we should have it. Yeah, I think, you know, what we're finding is kind of gives everybody a chance to take a deep breath and, you know, realize what's important in life. And, you know, the, the great thing, and I've always said this about Jefferson's and what we've always tried to do was create experiences and stories to share with people. Right. And man, this isn't the time to do that. I don't know what is, you know, I, you know, I've had drinks across the fence from a neighbor, you know, just did this virtual happy hour, <laughs> had people right. around the fire, you know, safe distancing, but it's, you know, it really makes you reset what's important. Yeah. And there's nothing like sharing, you know, a glass of bourbon with somebody to, to, you know, you just kind of go, we're in this together. We're, you know, right. we're all having to deal with it in different ways. Some of us have it much worse than others. And, right. uh, you know, put everything in perspective. This is, this has all brought us uh, together closer than I think just about anything ever has. I mean, that, that I've seen. And I think that, um, well, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, having, having those dis drinks from a distance, I think when this, is over Trey. we're all going to have a pretty big party just to celebrate aren't we i mean in some i went to school in new orleans and we were just talking about it with my college friends it's like one of the guys said when this gets over nothing's going to get done for the first week because everybody's going to be out celebrating just <laughs> happy to be around people and then we were having a reunion coming up in october and they're like it's going to be an incredible october we've got jazz festival that's been pushed back there you know Everything's been pushed back to October. The Derby, oh. yeah. There's going to be a lot going on. That's we're really going to miss that. I mean, that's something that I mean, it, probably among the. I mean, obviously we we we're glad that everyone is safe and we miss friends. But I think that's one of the things I'm going to miss most this year is is um, is going to the Derby and all the Derby festivities. How about you? What are you going to miss as far as uh, you know? What do my you kids miss? are missing spring break right now. You know that. Right. You know, which, yeah, that's not such a hardship in, in the scheme of things, but just it's some little things that, right. that I think things. everybody, yeah, the little things yeah. are just, uh, we, I, I went out kayaking with the kids yesterday. We're so lucky here yes. in Kentucky or in a lot of places where we've got wide open land. I can go horseback riding. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people I work with in New York and some of the bigger cities that, you know, they, they can't get out. They don't have that, right. Right. Yeah. You know, I've been shooting. I've, I've got cardboard boxes all over my backyard with my son's bow and arrow from when he was 10 years old, you know, taking target practice all day. Something that I can do that, you know, that's outside. There's so many people that don't have that. Right. Uh, and, you know, you got to look at these, you know, little things that we're able to do that other people aren't that, and, and you know, raise a glass and say, hey, you know, we're lucky. Right. I talked to a girl the other day who lives in Brooklyn and hadn't left her place in five, I think it was five days. That would be tough. Yeah. be really tough. Yeah. So, you know, it's, Wait. it's, I know the mayor in uh, Denver tried to close down the liquor stores and the dispensaries and oh. it was mayhem. You know, for, he closed it down for five hours or he said he was, people cleared out the liquor stores. There was two hour lines. And he was like, wait a second. Maybe we shouldn't do this. People need right. a good escape. They do. They do. We, we understand what's essential. And uh, 
And it's, you know, though we, that we joke about it, about saying, well, liquor stores are essential. They really are essential business. And it makes us feel proud to be in a business that people appreciate yeah. uh, and can um, enjoy. Uh, I went ahead and poured a little of the, um, I don't, which, which cast drink did you say you had there? You have all of them probably. I think I've got 19 with me. I'm going to pour a little of the nope. 10. Yeah, uh, that's what that's I have. I've I got 10 right here. Oh, you do have 10. Good stuff. Um, tell us about the 10. I don't remember. This is a couple, several years old. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would be lying remember. to you if I could tell you exactly. Four, maybe four, three or four years ago. I'm trying to remember. It's a really good one. I, I, I've, uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, I tell you, we, strength is always right out of the cast from the, the ocean. We won uh, Best in Fest at the New Orleans Bourbon Festival with Voyage On Day. the 10. Excellent. So... Let's revisit. Yes. You know, I'm not a big cast string fan, typically. Right. Because I think after a few sips, you know, and I know there's so many people out there that are, that they're like, you're crazy. Cast string's the way to go. But it, you know, after a few sips, it, you know, it does kind of dull your taste buds. One thing I, I like about this one it's at 100, I think this one is at 112 proof. Yes. Which isn't a killer, but there are so much more flavors that come out of here. And one of the interesting things that happens when you've got all the, the movement with inside the barrel, so right. it's not only picking up a lot of the flavors, but the wood acts as a filter and takes away the astringency, the, the uh, alcohol. So... This isn't a big astringent. You know, you're not getting a lot of that alcohol right there. There's a lot of flavor right there. And, you know, I hate to say it because it's it's the you know, monikers that I always use for the ocean. But as soon as I tasted this, salt and caramel. A lot of salt and caramel right there. And some I, I get some nice, off the nose, I get some really creamy brown sugars that, that are kind of against that salt. Yeah, um, sure. I think it's beautiful, though. I mean, and there's and, and there's sort of a tropical nature on some of these oceans. I mean, there is. I mean, and maybe it's just in the mind thinking tropical ocean, but there are these tropical notes that that collect. Yeah, um, so many yeah I think there's together. a little man in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is a great one to go back to. Yeah, yeah. I haven't opened this one in a long time, and I'm kind of digging it right now. Yeah, it is so nice. The cast strength, uh, and I'm glad we could revisit it together, Trey. The cast strength, is it a little more difficult to find than the original? Are they both? It uh, is. We we come out with this once a year. Once a year. So yeah. we're doing our bottling right now, um, and we'll be releasing it within the next 30 days would be my guess. That was the plan. Um, and then when it's gone, it's gone. It's about – a half voyage is the volume of, of what we'll use compared to the other ones. About a half of half of the half of a typical voyage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. It is so beautiful, and it's and it's warming, but it's not. It's not over the top with proof. The prevalence of alcohol is not. It, I mean, all these things even it out. That are I, I think so. I think it yeah. really came out nicely, and so yeah, like I, I said. At the New Orleans Bourbon Festival, which there are a lot of, you know, one of the categories is, yeah. is barrel proof, um, which that, you know, I think that was the first thing that happened, the first thing that was canceled during oh, all yeah, this. Yeah, that's right. I saw that come through. You, yeah. You know, yeah. I was on my way down. We were just ready to take off, and they, they pulled the plug on it, rightfully so. But, yeah. you know, the evolution of this is so, when you look back, it's, you know, it happened so quickly. At first, you're like, right. Wait, what's going on here? And then, phew, phew, phew. you know, it just a domino effect. But that was the, the first one. And, you know, you've got so many different industries that, you know, are affected by this. Yes. That, you know, it, it'll, you know, it'll be great to get back and support those guys when we can. Yeah. No, it, it really will be. It's, it's, uh, it's already great to see USBG, so many groups coming together to support yeah. the bartenders. Um, but it's uh, it's it's crazy. This is um, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a little while, I think, before we uh, we get back to normal. It feels I've got, 
I've got my tip jar for every drink I have. Yes, I tell put us a about tip that. jar in that's there. Great. Yeah. For and uh, yeah, that's important. Yeah, <laughs> that tip jar. I didn't realize that it would fill up the way that it has. Right. But, uh, uh, as I said, there's been a, some at-home consumption, which is fine. Right. <laughs> so, so, put a tip, so great suggestion. Put a tip jar on every time you reach for a drink. Have a cocktail. That way we can give that money to the bartenders. Um, you I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it really, really is. Nice idea. And if, if everybody supports it, then there's going to be a nice pocket of money to, to right. give them. Right. And yeah, that's the best thing that we can do right now. Absolutely. This this uh, this cast drink. Do you have, do you have a fa- I mean, I, do you have a favorite of the oceans? I mean, of, of all the ones you've done, is, it, is there one? That <laughs> well, on and- the first one was my favorite because right. I didn't know what it was going to be. Right. Totally exceeded my expectations. Didn't know what to expect, and it was on the ship for three and a half years. So. Yeah, it, it was so deep and rich. Um, Voyage 3 was really one of my favorites. Yeah, as I'm tasting this, 10 for sure. It's lovely. No, this 10 is amazing. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's one that I can go back to for sure. Uh, I, the 14 that I mentioned earlier, that's yes. one of the ones I really like. I, I like that one so much because it, it's – so different and um, so amplified because it's just that brininess is is pretty overwhelming. I think it's made us realize uh, it's in the bourbon business. I mean, when it comes to aging a bourbon, it can be in a warehouse. It can be so many places. The ocean experiment, the ocean line has helped inspire a lot of things that I think will continue to. Um, if there's one thing that you would want to do as far as an experiment that you've thought of, dreamt of, that would be similar to ocean as far as movement, as far as a different kind of aging? What would that be? Well, when we did the Jefferson's journey, which was reenacting yes. how to take barrels from Kentucky, you know, down through new Orleans and around Florida and back up, you know, I, I think that proved that the reason that bourbon proliferated in Kentucky, right wasn't just the water and the climate that we always talk about but it really cha- it it transformed whiskey into bourbon for the first time when those journeys were going on right and i think there's a lot of opportunity with changing the agitation and environment that you age in so uh tom we've got a lot of experiments going on with that so <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to uh launch some of these in the not too distant future that uh You'll you'll see what I'm hoping is going to be as as successful as Ocean, if not more so. Some 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 uh, experiments we can't quite talk about yet, but we'll tell you soon. Um, in the near future, on Bourbon Blog, that's a great point. Um, well, let's go for the uh, let's go for the Pritchard Hill next. That's what I have here at the Pritchard Hill. You got it. Um, I have a bottle. I'm going to crack into actually, but I haven't. Uh, I think I finished another one recently. What's that? I saved this. Ba- this is what I'd save back. Yeah, we are. We've got. Actually. We've got a nice supply of uh, Pritchard Hill, but we have just filled up another 200 barrels of Pritchard Hill that we're laying down right. and aging again. So, Right. So this one of the is... amazing things is some distilleries will find red wine barrels, port wine barrels, they'll do some nice finishes. What you do, you actually go to some incredible wineries um, and you find the best wine barrels, finishing barrels. That's something that I think really sets Jefferson's apart. It's amazing too, Tom, how much those barrels really influence the bourbon. Right. We've done two from Napa, two Napa cabs, Croft, and then now on Pritchard Hill at Chapelet Winery. Right. And by way of the crow flies, they're not five miles apart from each other. But right. But Croft was on the valley floor. Very close. Pritchard Hill is up on the mountain. Right. And, you know, all for the Pritchard Hill Cabernet, all the grapes are grown between 1,000 and 2,000 feet. Very steep slope, so the vines are stressed. It gives us 
it's very much known for their black cherry flavors that really comes out in this. And it, yeah. it's amazing how, you know, how each different plot can give such a difference. Kind of like these are almost as different as the, <laughs> I'm laughing at my daughter in the background, as the, <laughs> as the Napa cab and the Bordeaux cabs. That wow. So, this, so even though they're from that same region, five five miles apart as the crow flies, the influence is so different. Unbelievably so. It, this hits right away. First thing that gets on the tip of my tongue is black cherry. Yes. Some would say black currant, but yeah, it's you know, that fruit that just hits there, and that's what that's that bottle of wine tastes just like that. Wow. So we really extra finish these things. This is uh, age. As soon as they dump them, they send them out to us, and we put them in our hot boxes, which are just shipping containers, right. for twelve to fifteen months, depending on what time of year we put them in there. So it's really getting a lot out of that wood. What's the hot box do? Just if you could describe it, it. sweats out the wine into okay. the, the bourbon. So really, the first. 60 to 90 days, it tastes like you are having a glass of wine and a shot of bourbon behind it, which isn't bad. Oh, wow. But when it's in there for that extended amount of time, it really blends in. And it's almost, you get that fruit up front, and then it's kind of all bourbon in the middle, and then you get that fruit back on the back end. It's that flavor journey, that balance again. The bourbon mm -hmm. that goes into uh, the used barrel is about how old then? It's about eight years old. About eight years old, and then it mm -hmm. finishes for? 12 to 15 months. 12 to 15 so, months. It's, it's so beautiful. And that cherry is, is, is just so, is so fresh. It's so, it's so ripe. And then it goes into that bourbon. And you really get both the bourbon and the yeah. wine. I mean, it's an incredible balance. It really is. I, you know, it, it's almost like the wine bevels off the edges of the bourbon. Right. And uh, you know, one of the things I, I love about this I had a guy tell me, he's like, Trey, when I first tried Pritchard Hill, I absolutely hated it. And now it's my favorite bourbon. He's like, and I it finally realized why. It's like, I hated it because I didn't expect those flavors. It's right. not what I would tradi traditionally thought a bourbon should taste like. But right. he's like, I absolutely love it. And I'm, I'm drinking more of bottle might be an indication. I'm probably <laughs> drinking more of the Pritchard Hill than anything else right now. Um, it just, it, it's got some great, elegant flavors to it. When you look at what uh, winery you're going to partner with, do you think about, hey, this is a wine I love? And how do you, how do you go about that process? It's a wine that I love. Right. That's typically what it is. Right. And, or it sticks out um, of being something that's very different. Um, and then in the one that uh, I did with uh, Chateau Sudero, the Sultern. Right. Thomas Jefferson visited that one, wrote about it extensively, served it at the White House, celebrated it at Monticello. So I thought that that was kind of a cool story to bring it The Sudero is beautiful. Right. It's a great one. And yeah, the Pichon Barone. I mean, you can still find these some, but they're Correct. These were yeah. limited. Right. Those are very limited. Um, yeah. Thomas Jefferson visited that ch chateau as well. So... And there's some history to it. Um, I thought it would be very interesting to do something with that Bordeaux that's so earthy. And, and it, it really is. You, you, you taste the earth in each glass of that. Yeah. So very, you know, it, it's fun to, to have those things really come out. Yeah. I, know, I, I love the fact that you've, I mean, again, it's one of the only uh, bourbon distilleries brands that I know of that actually really finds the, 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 the wineries, those places, and seeks those barrels out because of the specific characteristics on those barrels. They do come through. I love the Pritchard Hill wines. They are so beautiful. Um, I, I would imagine there's some other uh, wineries, some other projects that you have coming that... Uh, I do, that yeah. are, are very different than yeah. what we've done in the past. And... Uh, you know, one of the great things, and another thing I didn't bring up is I've become good friends with the people at the wineries, and right. they're such great people, and that makes it so much more of a fun experience to do that instead of just doing it with any Cabernet or any, um, you know, name the varietal. It, it, it's not about the specific varietal, but it's the people and the place that really make it unique for me. Oh, it really is, yeah.
You're, one of the uh, the projects we can briefly mention is a rye whiskey that is finished in a cognac cask. Correct. Yeah, we've uh, we've had that uh, in the works for some time. It's uh, bottled up. I'm not sure when we're going to release it right now because of what, everything that's happening. But uh, it came out beautiful. We actually had that one in the. Uh, in the finishing barrel, the cognac barrel for fifteen year, uh, fifteen months, excuse me, and uh, wow. boy, it, it it does not taste like any rye whiskey I've had before. It's delicious. Can't it's wait to try it. the the rye itself is about how old? Five years. Five years, and the mm -hmm. are, are you going to mention yet where the cognac cask came? And from? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Okay. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. That's very exciting. I would I would mm -hmm. think there's there's some similarities between the cognac and the bourbons. Um, what do you hope and what is happening with that cognac, the influence of the sugars on that rye? You know, you get a lot of peaches, a lot of orange. It's this great citrus that really comes out of it. That, and, you know, you've got the sharpness of the rye, but it, it just it adds so much fruit to it that is so different than what you would typically get with a, you know, that spice up front and then just the dryness behind it, uh, which you get with a lot of rye. this this is completely different. So, you know, I, I've had a lot of people who have said, you know, Trey, I don't like this or that because it's, it's different. And, um, you know, for those that, that like their bourbon one specific way, that's fine. But this is, it's going to be different. And I think it's got great flavors. And just like I told you about the guy who told me that he hated Pritchard Hill when he first tried it. And now, and now he loves it. Yeah, if you try it with an open mind, I, I, Richard, I also had, you no, know, it was actually Groth, um, had this glow, glowing review when it was written out. You know, it was like, oh, you know, all these great flavors came in. And then it was kind of a subpar review and said, I just don't like this type of bourbon. Well, that's fine. If you don't like that, that that's great. But it's got, it's going to be unique. It's going to be very flavorful. And there's a place for it. I was I was talking to my dad yesterday. Actually, he did. He grilled up steaks, and he had every time he grills a steak, he always has a Pritchard Hill cast finish because he thinks it pairs so well with that meat. That's so. incredible. I'm going to reach for the uh, back here for the rum cask finish that I have back here. And if you do have any questions before we have this uh, last drink for Trey. Um, Ask us down below. So many great people and questions joining us tonight from all over the, the world. And we know that, uh, that your bourbons are enjoyed all over the world and have a, a great reception. I actually ran into you, I think it was four years ago, something in London at the JW at yeah. the Grosvenor House. Uh, right. You have a great reception in, in, in England and, and really internationally, don't you? Well, um, we, we are lucky enough to have some great fans over there. Um, great um and there's you know, people that have sought us out. We sell a little bit overseas, not that much. Just, you know, we've had trouble keeping up with supplies here domestically. So right. that's what we've tried. But we've kind of salted a few international markets. And, yeah, we've got a great following there. And we're putting more and more bourbon down every day. So hopefully we can start growing that international market like we'd like to. That's, uh, that's, that's great. Um, well, I want to ask you, what would be a, you know, was there a moment in, in your journey of doing this, because you've been at it for quite a while, um, finding great bourbons, um, doing interesting experiments, really inspiring the industry. Was there a, a real turning point for you that for you that you saw that was really meaningful for bourbon? I mean, what was the best bourbon moment that you've had? Um, well, yeah. like I said, I've had two moments in my career. One was being at independent stave and becoming a barrel right. chef and seeing right. what people do with what, right. and then I thought, why are we, you know, and then one of the, I benefit from my dad being a bourbon historian and writing about it and seeing why things were done the way they were. And it's all about practicality. Right. And if you throw out practicality, because as I said, we've got 19 different expressions of Jefferson's now, 17 of those 19, we do something more than what, typically distillers do, which is distill it, age it, cut it to proof, and bottle it. So we're putting more time, money, and effort into it to massage it one way or the other. So, And we're always doing it with fully mature whiskey. So we're not trying to 
cheat the process or accelerate the process. We're just trying to enhance it. So when you look at why it was done through practicality, you think, okay, well, how can you make it better? It might not be practical. It might be more costly, but how can you do it to enhance it one way or the other? So that's certainly looking at the barrels that way made me look at it that way. And then changing the agitation and the environment on the ocean. Yeah. And we opened that up and I saw what a difference that was. I thought, okay, we are aging it to catch up to what happened when it was traveling on the rivers and on the ocean to be delivered right. back to where there were people. Right. So, okay. That makes sense. We're going from step A to step B, trying to re, because it was no longer practical to ship it that way. It was much easier when the railroad and steamboat and interstate have it just to ship it up and back. So they had to catch up by aging it. And then let's age it right next to where we distill it. That's all practical. So let's look outside what's practical. And then we can take things that other people have done around the world or technologies that have been invented. And again, we can take all these things and try to enhance it, make it better. But I'm not trying to do that by starting with young whiskey. You got to have that great a base, great base whiskey first. Some of those same flavors that uh, you might have tasted on way back when on those bourbons that were being shipped on the river, those might have been doing the same things that we can taste now, right? I mean, on what you're doing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, when we did that, did that um, experiment with Jefferson's journey, we were bottling up our 16 year old presidential that had been double barreled for five years. And that one that went on the ocean for a year or on the journey for one year was every bit as dark as that 16 year old bourbon. Right. And the flavors on it, although it wasn't nearly as briny as you get on the ocean, you had a lot of those caramels that came out of there. And it was absolutely the easiest drinking bourbon that I've had. So, you know, yes, I, I, I think you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of common flavors and right. styles that come out of it. You know, one of the things that I like that's just as important to me is flavor is mouthfeel. Oh yeah. Or something, you know, thick, chewy, coating your tongue. That, you know, to me, more of that can make up for flavor every day of the week. You want to so feel it all over the mouth. And that's how. Absolutely. Yeah. How yeah. does that make up for flavor? I mean, I, I, I think I get it. It usually goes hand in hand with flavor. With the flavor, but, it's, the, it's the sensory experience of that, of that mouth feel. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's so important to me. If I'm looking for one flavor or another, right. it's more that. So it, they kind of go hand in hand, but we're really, I could say I want a thicker mouthfeel or something chewier than I do with a certain flavors or more flavorful bourbon. I, right. I, that mouthfeel makes up for a lot. Excellent. Well, we're going to try the, uh, which this has a great mouthfeel, this, this oak, the old, I'm sorry, the old rum cast finish. Uh, you got it. You got and, it. And uh, a lot of people, uh, talking about how great your bourbons are down here and, and how much they like the finish on this one. Uh, this one goes into, how, how old is the rum cask on this one? They're, the Gosling's Old Family Reserve Rum. So they are barrels that held rum 20? for 16 to, 16, 16 to 20 years. 16 to 20. The oldest yeah, so would be 20. They held uh, wow. bourbon for four years and then rum for 16 to 20. So you know, when we get them back, they could have been 24 years old. This is very old stuff. Yeah. Very old stuff. So, so it gives a lot of that caramel. Yeah. 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 A lot of bananas, a lot of coconut, and just a lot of rum flavors come through. This is one you don't see every day, too. This is one that you release. Is it, is, what's the, we do the, it's, it's a once a year release. Right. Um, so we'll have this available uh, probably in November, maybe December of next year. That'll be the next release of it. Correct. Yeah, we're actually um, just getting whiskey into barrels right now. So, uh, and this is, you know, we're six, 
six to eight months is the finishing on this. So depending good. on when we put it in the wood. So, I, so we get it in here. Right some now. finishes a little shorter than others because of the intensity. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You know, like the Cabernet, much longer. We only do four months on the Twin Oak. Wow. Up to 15 months on the, the Cabernet cast, the Pritchard Hill. So it just, you know, it just depends. It also depends on what time of year we put it in. Yeah. So if we put it in right now, so we're going into the hot months, we're going to get more flavor, more intensity out of that right away. So we don't need to put it in there as long. And then, yeah, you know, you know, longer is not always better. We, I expected to have the Twin Oak in longer than four months, but at four months, I tasted it like, let's get that out of the barrel right, right. now. And you knew it was time. I knew it was time. You know, you always want to take it, you know, and that's why you continue to experiment. You know, some will leave in there longer. You, you, just so we know, all right, maybe we pulled it out at four months last time. Maybe four and a half, five months would have been optimal. You know, it's just like a bourbon age. You know, everything's got an apex, and then you start getting diminishing returns. So that happens in just aging any bourbon, when it's finishing bourbons, whatever you're doing with it. Time is not always yeah, more time is not always good. Right. It's Trey Zoller, founder of Jefferson's Bourbon, and one of my favorite guys in the business with some of my favorite whiskeys in the business. Trey, uh, yeah. great to see you and having a drink with you on camera here. Tonight. You got it, Tom. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, fun. And, and so many good people have joined us, and uh, we've had some really good whiskeys. Um, it's been a lot of fun, man. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, next Sunday, let's do it. I enjoyed it. Definitely, yes. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. We uh we definitely want to have you come back here before we uh well hopefully this quarantine drinking team series will uh well hopefully the quarantine won't be going on too much longer, but we'd love to have you come back before it's all you got it. Be, you be got amazing. It. It's always great chatting whiskey with you and um thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Trey. It's you great bet. to see you. Cheers. Great to we're see trying you as well. some of the uh, to end it, we're trying some of the old rum cask finish and if you're quarantined, look for uh, Jefferson's Bourbon in your liquor stores online, and uh, I think it's a good drink to have in the quarantine. You got it. Absolutely. Hey, Tom, this was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much, Trey. Have a good night. You all Take stay care. well and safe and healthy during the uh, quarantine, and thanks to Trey for joining us tonight, Jefferson's Bourbon, for everybody to help put this together. We appreciate it. Join us tomorrow night. It'll be 7 p.m. Eastern time. We'll have Matty Rock of Drew Estate Cigars and to find the whole schedule of what we're doing from now to the end of the quarantine. We're going to do this every night. So keep telling your friends, everybody that's a whiskey fan, keep joining us. We're going to keep doing it. Thanks, everybody who joined us. Cheers from RibbonBlanc.com.